Any day now, the Supreme Court is expected to rule in favor of rolling back race-based affirmative action at colleges and universities. But what about legacy admissions? And why does anyone think that is acceptable? All that and more now on Graphs Grievances. Back in October, the Supreme Court heard oral arguments in a case concerning whether race-conscious admissions policies at Harvard and the University of North Carolina violate the Constitution or federal civil rights law. Based on questioning from the justices and its conservative supermajority, the court appears likely to rule that affirmative action programs at colleges and universities are unlawful. This, despite the fact that as recently as 2016, the court upheld affirmative action programs at the college level, saying race could be used as one factor in ensuring a diverse student body. Yet irrespective of how the court rules any day now and the potentially drastic consequences to come, another form of college admissions that overwhelmingly benefits white, wealthy applicants will remain. Legacy admissions or the preference of admitting the children of alumni. An analysis from the National Bureau of Economic Research of Harvard's admissions data found that while the overall admissions rate between 2009 and 2014 was just 6%, a legacy applicant to Harvard had an over 33% chance of acceptance. And an applicant on the quote, Dean's interest list code for someone whose family donated to the school, had an over 42% chance of getting accepted at the Ivy League school. But you know who had the best chance of getting into Harvard? Those who were offspring of a Harvard faculty or staff member. Those applicants had an over 46% chance of getting in. And these admitted legacy applicants were not at all racially diverse with nearly 70% of them being white. The same goes for admitted applicants on the Dean's List. Nearly 70% of them were also white. And Harvard is not alone. Other Ivy League colleges and elite universities also give strong preference to applicants who are alumni or donated to the school. According to Forbes, just under 50% of private universities consider legacy status in the admissions process and over 80% of ultra-selective colleges, such as Ivy League institutions, do. Legacy admissions making up about 16% of Harvard's freshman class last year, and legacy admissions comprising about 14% of Yale's freshman class. The blatantly elitist and unfair nature of legacy admissions explains why 75% of Americans view the practice as inappropriate according to a Washington Post poll last year. This includes nearly 74% of white Americans, 73% of black Americans, 75% of Hispanic Americans, and 80% of Asian Americans. If colleges and universities truly believe that a diverse class is best for their students, as I personally do, the first thing they should do is eliminate legacy admissions and making admissions decisions based on how much one's parents donate to the school. Undoubtedly, this would result in a more racially and economically diverse class because you would not be giving special preference to white, wealthy students whose parents benefited from past racist admissions policies. And as for the notion that legacy admissions raise funds to aid low-income students and construct new facilities, there is little evidence that the universities and colleges we are talking about today need any more money. Harvard and Yale have larger endowments than the gross domestic product of a handful of countries. Harvard's endowment topping $53 billion at the end of fiscal year 2021 and Yale's endowment totaling $42 billion. But even far less prestigious universities, such as Texas A&M University, have an endowment around $17 billion. So irrespective of what happens to affirmative action, it is far past time for legacy admissions to end, to advance equity, and the college experience for all who choose to pursue it. Thank you for watching Graf's Grievances. Please let me know what you think and subscribe.